Jimmy, what are you doing? Working on junk. What are you doing? Boy, this is an antique. Hey, I think I figured out why this has low compression. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about a 650SX. This example of a 650SX is the best one I've ever seen, or the worst one I've ever seen, depending on your perspective. For the channel, it's the best, but it's something to buy, I wouldn't recommend it because every issue that could possibly be wrong with these 650s, this is an example of. So I can only assume that somebody had it as a part ski, and as their other skis broke, they just swapped out the bad parts with the good ones off of this one. So as we'll see as we get deeper into it, this is a perfect example to go through, build, and make run, make faster, make more reliable, and that's what we're gonna do with this. So we'll go ahead and get started. And the, I guess the first thing is the chin pad. Chin pads on the 650s are a lot of money, and this is why. This is kind of the fate of all of them. Uh, the base looks pretty good though, so we're gonna take this down to jet trim and see if they'll recover this for us, if they can save it or not. That's a big that's a big ask, but we'll see what happens. And it looks like the steering's okay on this thing, but as you can see, the throttle cable has seen better days. And the start-stop switch looks like it's been repaired at least twice, so it's probably no good. But it does have a quick steer on it, some other goodies. Everything else, the steering cable feels pretty good. Uh, the handle pull's kind of bad, so we'll put bushings on that. And as you can see, we got a problem up front here with the fuel system. It's all but gone. <laughs> this is where the fuel cap would be normally. We got bolts that aren't stainless up here. Those need to be changed out. And it's missing the bow eye and some other parts up here. It's missing the hood latch. So that goes, that goes on our list of things we need to source. And it came with an air filter. We don't use air filters. And we don't make the trash can either. But So put that on the list. Uh, the hood looks pretty good. The hood's in decent shape, that'll, that'll fly. And then, uh, it does have a gas tank though, and a oil tank. What's exciting about this is, is I will show you guys what to do with this oil tank and make a reserve tank, it works very well. So that'll be fun. We've got some very strange plugs and wiring. It's got the stock carburetor and the stock fuel pump, which is kind of exciting because we're gonna make all this work, and we're gonna make this go over 40 miles an hour. I know that's a lot to ask of these skis, but <clears throat> we can do it, it's doable. You can see it's got a broken stud right here, so the motor's gotta come apart. That's gonna be a challenge. And it's also got the grenade. This is the grenade. And for those of you who don't know what this is, they say this is the grenade, because if you pull this pin, <clears throat> the motor will blow. But it's okay, because the motor's already blown. I've already heard this thing crank over. So I knew what I was getting into when I purchased it. It has a battery core of some kind here. Normally I would love to start this up and hear it run and I would actually take it to the lake and ride it and do a GPS run just for giggles, but this motor is no good. So I already know that in this situation it would be a 35 to 37 mile an hour ski. But we'll see later. When we get done with this thing it will be over 40, hopefully. Yep, see, no gasket. This gasket's always gone, always missing. So that's going to be the first thing we're going to need to find. That's going to be a hard one to come up with. And then uh, what else we got? We got a helper spring. We got a helper spring for the... Uh... Oh, and it broke. Okay, this is broke up here. That'll be on our list of things to fix. It looks like we're missing the bracket for the hood. Oh, it's got a water box. So I guess that's a spare water box here. So that's not bad. This impeller here looks like it's a, what is this here? It's a 16. I'm guessing it's, I'd say it's a Solos, but it, it looks like a SCAT. We're not gonna run this because that's way too tall. That'll never work in this ski. But it's parts. And we got this here, what else we got here? We got a pipe, pipe is good. Looks like the pipe has been off. Yeah, see this thing's, yeah, this is this has been a part ski. This has been, people have been robbing parts off of this for years. So it would be interesting to see if we have some kind of spark though. Actually, you know what? My curiosity's got the best of me here. Let's see if we got spark. Do we have a ground strap? 
Your kitty, 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 kitty. Where you at here? There's a gas tank strap, that's positive. Another battery strap, that's positive. Bilge pump, that's positive. Another gas, the other gas tank strap. A lot of stuff in here. I already saw the fuel pump. What's in here? What is this? Wow. Would you look at that? This is a brand new, spanking new Kawasaki OEM fuel pump for a 1989 Kawasaki jet ski. These have not been available since the turn of the century. And this is brand new. So that's incredibly, that's cool. We're gonna have fun with this ski, guys. That's positive. All right. But still no ground cable. Hmm. And it looks like the electrics, actually the, the electrics are all kind of botched up anyway. So again, there's no, uh, there's no wiring anywhere. Huh. I don't even see stator wiring. So there's not even a stator on the ski. <laughs> Here's the hood latch. That's positive, and it's intact. So I'm not really sure what to think about the electric. So the motor's got to come apart anyway. All right, so we have no juice, we have none of that. But uh, oh, that is. <laughs> All right, this is the ground wire. Yes, it's red. Yes, that's bad. All right. So for those of you that know. Red is always positive, black is always ground. We have two red wires here. Actually, we have three red wires here, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of monkey motion here. <laughs> so, I hear the starter doesn't sound good. The bend, it's either the starter or the Bendix is no good. The motor's not turning over as fast as it should and I hear the engine's down on compression. So I'm willing to bet it's the front cylinder. We'll verify first before we take it apart the rest of the way. Oh. <laughs> Here's probably why it has low compression. Let's take a look. Since it requires no effort here, and this just goes this goes to help my theory of uh, a part ski. Jimmy, what are you doing? Working on junk. What are you doing? Boy, this is the antique. Hey, I think I figured out why this has low compression. Why? I just took this off without tools. <laughs> That's <laughs> never a good sign. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Where's the gasket? There isn't the you don't need no stinking gasket. There's no gasket. So this here, this is processed engine parts here. This is bad, which means the crank is probably bad, which is why it turns over slow. And the head is bad. So we may have to condemn this motor, but that's okay because we have more. Just a couple. There's parts in there. Dude, there's, what did it, what did it process? The bearing? I don't know, probably. I don't know. It ate something. Does it, might, it turn? That might, yeah, it does. It does? Did well, you compression it test? Over. Did you actually compression test to. this motor? I was going to, <laughs> but then it was turning over so slow, and I grabbed the head, head, grabbed the head bolt, and I was like, "Oh, that's loose." And then this one's broke there. It's not broke. Somebody stole it. It's been worked on. It's got a blue manifold. I, I think this. Um, I think this was a parts ski. I think people robbed parts. Once the motor did that, I think people just started taking parts off of it. You know what they did? This was somebody like Jet Ski Jim. And they're like, Absolutely. we're going to put that on Craigslist. We'll put it all together with all these parts. Ooh, that's nice. Brand new. That looks like, ooh, that's the original cow. It is. Did it come with this boat? It did. Whoa, it was in the bottom of the hall. That's worth more than the boat. I, <laughs> um, I wasn't going to say that. But so yeah. they put it together with all the junk yep, laying around yep, the shop. Yep. They put it on Craigslist. Copy it together. And this guy, Jim, come by and said, I'll take Dude, that. this is perfect. This is the best jet ski video jet ski ever. Is this a rear exhaust? No, it's not. It's a side exhaust. Blah, 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 blah. It's a, this side. <sighs> so yeah, she needs everything. Well, that's okay. You know a guy that can fix I it. I know a guy. Whether he's willing to do this or not, it's a whole other story. I just came over for a Pepsi. It's hot outside. It is hot outside. I, I, I what is it, 118, 18? 19? It was 18 when I saw it last. It's hot out there, that's for sure. 
We're gonna go find something to drink. We'll catch you guys later. Okay guys, we're back on the 650 here and we've got our intake stuffer from uh, from Pro Watercraft. And we're gonna take and we gotta clean this. This pump tract is in really bad shape because somebody put some kind of a mystery silicone on here and uh, some kind of auto parts. Silicone does strange things to water flow. So we, we definitely want all this off of here. So we're gonna pull this off of here before we glue this in. And it'll make it glue in the pump in a lot easier too. Okay guys, so we're on the 650 here and we notice we haven't installed the uh, intake track to the pump stuffer. The reason we haven't done that yet is because the pump needs rebuilt and the steering cable, I actually had a steering cable in stock and they left us the components we needed for this which there's an o-ring, there's a washer and then there's a c-clip here. This little fastener here, it slides on here like so and then, oops, you got to be able to maintain that. And then this brass nut here captures all that. And I'll tighten that with a wrench real quick. That's our steering cable. These tubes here are aluminum. One year prior, 87, 8, and 9, these were plastic and they break. So you need to drill them out and replace them with aluminum tubing. This one we don't need to, thank goodness, because there's enough. Everything else is poor ski needs. But we'll continue with the pump. We've got to install the pump and we got to install the driveline carrier because that's bad too. We need to have all that in line. We set the adjustment for the bearing carrier with the engine installed. So we'll do all that, set all that up, install the pump permanently. I ordered a 15, a straight 15 impeller for this. I found one used for a good deal. So. We'll go ahead and get all that installed and rigged up. As you can see, the pump is in really bad shape, but the veins, the stator sections are all straight. So we'll rebuild, we'll replace these bearings. And we got a different impeller, so we'll, we'll get all this stuff put together. And of course, right donor ski, we know this. And as I said, everything is wrong. So this here is, we've got wobble. We're gonna take and push these edges down here with the, the plastic soldering iron. It'll take and Stiffen those up a little bit. We'll be able to reuse that. Guys, there's our pump. There's our old bearings, our old bearing spacer. It's all junk. You can see it's all in bad shape. As you can see, the bearings come in from the bottom there. The bearings are trapped both directions. Oops. The bearings trap both directions. They go in from the top and the bottom. This sets your, <clears throat> this sets your, your depth. This is so you don't crush the bearings. You'll know when it's right when this thing is trapped in there and you got to be careful because it moves off center like that you have to make sure it's centered so that the shaft goes through this goes there you got bearings on top or i'm sorry you got seals on top and then this little guy here sets your depth for your um, impeller and then your impeller sits on top of there this is your sealing surface this keeps the water out this was in pretty bad shape, but I hit it with some emery cloth and it cleaned it right up. So we'll put this all back together, put the impeller in, grease everything, anti-seize. We've got a sorry, straight 15. We'll throw that in the pitch gauge and make sure it's actually a straight 15. Hey guys, here we are. You see our little impeller here. It's kind of really hard to see. There's a black line there. See how straight it is? If you come around here, You can see the very first line, the black line, is a 15 degree. So <clears throat> you can see we are a 15 degree impeller, so that's going to work out really well for us. And of course, Wattcon.com. Hey guys, you can see we're getting ready to put the pump in. We've got the impeller installed nicely. Pump turns over nice. We run a bead of silicone down along here. Okay, both sides. And that's all we do for now. We will do this, this line here after the pump is installed because it just becomes a mess to do it otherwise. And you can see we've cleaned off all the extra silicone. We've removed all that and we try really hard not to induce more silicone onto this gel coat because silicone does weird things to water. So we'll get that installed, get that bolted up, and we'll go ahead and start working backwards on the pump there and finish the back of the ski here. Okay hey guys, as you can see, we got the pump glued in here. 
we got four bolts here and uh, we got our three water tubes here one two three this is our cold water in this is the pressure side of the pump here this puts cold water into the motor for cooling system and it goes through this tube here and then these two tubes over here the bottom one is a hot water dump from the engine we're going to repurpose that that comes out from the exhaust pipe we're actually going to change that we'll show you when we get to the inside of the hole here and then this is the vacuum this is vacuum bilge pump out so this is the nozzle here you saw we fixed the nozzle so inside here there's a straw okay and that straw they use the venturi effect here to suck the water out of the hull so there'll be a hose here and there's actually a bilge pump screen in there and it vacuums water out of the hull so we're going to get that plumbed up we're going to get this plumbed up we're going to get the steering nozzle bolted up and the steering nozzle hooked up to the steering cable and then we're going to get this all put together we'll put the ride plate on and we'll be ready to move forward now if you've noticed we have the intake right here laying in place we want to make sure all the holes line up because the pump, when we bolt the pump then it's actually a variable. It'll move back and forth. You want to make sure that this sets this right intake grate sets your distance where the pump goes. Pump is glued in, it'll dry. Steering is done. Nozzle is done. The steering goes lock to lock. The rest of the adjustments we'll be able to make on the handle pull side, the steering side. Bilge pump, vacuum to the Venturi pressure water pressure to the water side water pressure uh, we do clamps on the pressure side we don't do it on the vacuum side because the vacuum side never leaks because it pulls itself in on, on pulls itself tighter you can see we've left our drain open we'll see that later another thing I forgot to mention we drilled and tapped this was the one that was broke uh, we drilled and tapped it because it is so difficult to catch a center of a drill like that the first quarter inch or so is stripped so we're using a longer bolt this is the odd bolt that's why it's in there so we know the other five will be okay and then we'll put the uh, ride plate on here and then what we'll do is we'll take and we'll run a bead of silicone along this front edge here all the way across our, uh, we have our drive shaft our engine coupler dampener drive shaft dampener that goes in here we've got our pump installed Got our engine sitting here, and we're going to take and install the drive shaft. The engine is installed, and the bolt holes are all lined up nicely. We haven't pushed the coupler back against the bulkhead yet. Oh, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and push this back. That sets a that sets a gap. So how it can be it can be up or down on the bulkhead there. The engine in place sets the gap and sets the distance. We don't want that in a bind at all. So I got the back of it glued already. I've slid it back into place. I'm going to bolt it up tight and then we can pull the motor back out and we'll be ready to install the uh, intake tract or the uh, pump stuffer. Everybody, we got the pump stuffer installed. We have a scat track 15 straight 15 pitch blade in there. Uh, we rebuilt the pump. We got the whole bottom end together and done. We got this beautiful brand new Rend intake grate. We're going to flip the boat back over and, and finish, finish putting her together. Now we're to the battery box here. Battery box is pretty simple. We're going to change the screws out because these screws are too small. They pull out. We're going to change them to a number 14 by three quarter stainless screw. And you do have to pre-drill these holes because if you try to put this, if you try to put this big screw in this little hole, it'll break, it'll break the stanchions down there. You have to be very careful when you're pre-drilling not to drill through the hole because the hole is very shallow here. So we're going to go ahead and get that done and then we're going to move on to the water box and exhaust system. Here we are, we've got the battery box done. As you can see we've got the, the screws turned out well. we got it all pre-drilled, it's in tight. That'll never come out. I've never had issues with those. I wanted to go over the exhaust system real quick because we're going to modify some things, but I have to start the story with the Kawasaki X2. 1986 was a pinnacle year for Kawasaki. They had been riding the high of their 550-440 success for many, many years. Yamaha was coming to the industry. They are about to introduce their Wave Runner. So they had to step it up a notch. So they decided to do a two-seater. So they called it an X2, which stood for experimental two-seater. With that came a 650 motor, which was bigger, better, faster, more powerful. It gave us reed cages. 
It did a bunch of other stuff, very positive for the industry, but it was a test bed. They, they weren't really sure about all their, their decisions. The, the 86X2 had many things that were on its own, its own year. They didn't have a rev limiter for the ignition system. Uh, Kawasaki figured out that was a bad idea for the general public. So they did several things different for the X2. The ignition was one of them. They didn't have a rev limiter in their 86X2. They found that that was a bad idea. Their water box was very free flowing. That's why in the aftermarket world or the used world today, the 86X2 demands a lot higher dollar. And we'll explain why in a minute. But they were also trying to figure out this whole process of cooling the motor down. So the way the cooling system works on a 650 is cold water is introduced in the bottom of the exhaust manifold. What that does is that lets the hot exhaust gases heat up the water so when it sends it into the motor, it's not sent into the motor cold and causing a seizing issue where the, the cylinders shrink down on the pistons. This plate's blocked off here. This is an exhaust manifold gasket here. This will be a plated gasket. This doesn't let water come up into this, this head pipe area here. So it's forced into the cylinders and then it comes up through the head gasket where it's metered through several holes. Then the water's released to the top of the head and it's actually sent back into the top of the exhaust pipe here through this loop here. Now if you can imagine, that's a lot of water going into the exhaust system and only a tiny little quarter inch hose is wasted off. The rest of it's sent into the exhaust stream itself through this very sizable hole down there. What we used to do back in the day is, is weld that up and drill it smaller. The problem with that is it gives us, that's a spot, that creates a spot for uh, clogging issues. And when it clogs, the exhaust system melts down and now you've affected reliability. So we don't like to do that. But what, what Kawasaki found was that they're sending all this water into the exhaust system and ends up packing the exhaust system and creating, generating too much back pressure. So what they did was they made a relief hole here and drilled this out and let the exhaust, let the water out of the exhaust go to the waste tube at the back of the ski. We showed you guys that earlier in the, the video when we were doing the pump area. That's where that other tube comes out. It's supposed to be wastewater out of the exhaust. Unfortunately, more exhaust gas comes out than water. So you still had that problem with packing the exhaust pipe. We've reduced pressure in the exhaust system. Kawasaki had to come up with another solution. That's when they decided to do the more restrictive water box. What we've learned over the years is the better solution is to tee the water off as it goes into the exhaust. So we run a tee here, we put a brass tee here, and we run that water down to that other waste tube. We, block, we weld this up here, right? We weld that closed, then we take that hose and we run it up to the tee here. And now we've distributed more of the water away from the exhaust system already. So now the water that's left from the tee out, we've already reduced it half of that and then more of that's wasted off in the quarter inch. And what that does is as you rev the motor, as the RPM builds and the pump pressure builds, the water pressure in the engine builds, and your exhaust pressure builds as well, it's self-regulating. As the exhaust pressure builds and the water pressure builds, it all maintains itself evenly. So there's really not a lot to deal with after that. But once we fix those problems, now we have to deal with the water box issue of the water box generating too much back pressure. Down this hole here, you have a, a very strict, there's a plate that's blocked off and it creates a lot of back pressure. So what we do is we come over here to this other water box and you can see there's two, I don't know if you can see there's two plates there. Oh, there we go. You can see we've drilled three holes through two different sets of plates. That relieves the back pressure through the exhaust system out of the water box. That, that that fixes our problem that was created by Kawasaki's repair of losing all their exhaust pressure out the back of this hole here. We've relieved the back pressure through the water box. We've, we've repaired and replaced the back pressure here lost through this outlet. And then we've put a T here to distribute the water away from the exhaust so we're not packing the exhaust with water. That fixes a lot of those issues. So like I said, we're not trying to modify. We're not trying to do things differently. We're just trying to modernize. Uh, we're not trying to lose our stock reliability either, and that maintains that as well. So then we did that. We're going to come over to the handle pull here, and we've tried to re we're going to repair the bushings, but someone has already been in here and replacing bushings. These are aftermarket bushings, and they're wallered out. 
So what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to get some marine techs and we'll epoxy those in there and that'll fix the handle pull issue. And then on the steering side of it, the reason why we're going to do that, we're saving this handle pull is because these, these bolt holes here are in very nice shape. Usually these are all damaged and this stuff is in amazing condition. So we're going to use it. And the steering we're going to leave alone. It has a quick steer over here. So we're going to leave that in place. But if you wanted to, now's the time to do it. If you were wanting to do a steering upgrade, now's the, now would be the chance you'd have to do it. And I have a UMI steering here. They're not called UMI anymore, but they were the ones that pioneered it. If you wanted to do a UMI steering upgrade, now's the time to do it. You'd put this in a vise and unscrew this boss out of here. And this would just slip underneath here. And you would drill four holes, one, two, three, four, and you'd bolt it right to there. And now you have a UMI setup. It works very well. Great. So once we get the handle pole glued and epoxied, we're going to go ahead and we'll probably paint the handle pole white. I think it's going to look better for this project moving forward. And we're going to put all this together and then next video we're going to work on the motor and get the motor ready for the rebuild. That's going to be a pretty big task. And then we'll get this thing together and ride it. So thanks for watching.